So far in this course, we've written web services and uh, deployed it, the Glassfish application server. So we've created web applications with certain classes which have the web service annotation. So we annotated, let's take the product catalog class, we annotated it with add web service and deploy this application on Glassfish and Glassfish noticed that this is a web service thanks to this annotation and it published the web service. So this is ideal in a full production mode. You would use a Java E uh, application server in order to deploy your web services. But there is one handy way to test web services in development environment without having to depend on Glassfish. So when you're writing code, when you're testing out different scenarios and you're making frequent changes, it is a bit of an inconvenience to deploy it to Glassfish every time because it takes a little bit of time to have it deploy and have the web service published. So there is one quick way to do this without having to use Glassfish. And actually, we don't even need any external server at all. So Java provides support for web services in JDK itself. We don't need Java E. So if all you have is the JDK set up in your development environment, you are actually all set to publish web services. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this tutorial. So the way to publish web services without having to depend on any um, external web or application server is by coding it. So I'm gonna create a new class. I'm gonna right click on the package, new Java class, and uh, I'm going to call this testmart publisher. And I'm gonna have a main method in it, simple Java class, and in this Java class, I'm gonna actually write code to publish the web service. If that sounds scary, don't worry, it's actually fairly simple. So all I need to do is use a class called endpoint. So this endpoint class is from Java X XML WS package, right? So I'm gonna use this class and uh, this class has a publish method. It actually has an overloaded publish method. I'm gonna use this one, which has two arguments. One is string address and the object implementer. Okay, so I'm gonna use this. So the publish method takes in the first argument as the address where you want the web service to be published. So I'm gonna choose the address HTTP localhost because it's local to my machine. So I'm in a development mode anyway, so I'm gonna be the only person using this. So I'm gonna choose localhost. And um, actually, let me change this. So the port here has to be something that's not currently used. So we know that 8080 is a, is a common port. I might run another server later, which would need the port 8080. So I'm gonna use a port which is not currently in use or it's not something that I would use later. So any port which is not likely to be used should work. I'm gonna use port one, two, three, four. And uh, I'm gonna give a name to my web service. So I'm gonna call this product catalog, right? So it's a name in the URL. So I'm basically specifying the URL where I want the web service to be published. So this is the first argument to the endpoint.publish method. The second argument is an instance of the class that is the web service. So here there is the class which implements the web service interface and it has the web service annotation. So it needs an instance of a class like this. I'm gonna create an instance of the product catalog class and pass it here. So I'm gonna say new product catalog. And uh, believe it or not, this is all it takes. So I can actually save this and uh, run this main method as a Java application. Well, that's it. Now I, I can access this URL. So let me copy this URL here and access it in a browser. And here you can see that there is a page that's created with the service name 
the address is given over here and there's a link for the Vistal. I can click on this link and here you see the Vistal and all its glory is being auto-generated. So this is pretty much the same as what we saw in Glassfish, right? Without, of course, the whole cycle of deploying the application to Glassfish. So we were able to do this just by running a program. Now the question is, who's doing all this work? So far, we've been talking about uh, Glassfish publishing the web service, right? We create web services just by deploying an application to Glassfish and just we conveniently said, yes, it's Glassfish doing all the work. But I think now is a good time to think about who's actually doing the work since we're able to achieve this without even involving Glassfish in the picture. So the JAXWS standard that we've been learning so far has been just that, it's a standard. So we learned about these annotations, we learned about all these attributes to the annotations. There's a whole lot of stuff that we can do and uh, have the web service work uh, without really coding anything related to web service. We just annotated stuff and that was pretty much it. So the JAXWS standard tells us what annotations we need to do, right? It tells us that an annotation called web service has to be over here. The you know, the property called endpoint interface has to be here. So it's a standard. It tells us the standard way to write web services. But then there is actually something else entirely that does the work. There is code which looks at this, which looks at your web service, looks at these annotations, make sure that that's, they're all following the standard. And if they're following the standard, that code actually does the work of publishing the web service, right? So that code is actually called the implementation of the standard. So JAXWS is a standard. It provides guidelines for us to write web services. And then there is this other part of it, which is the actual implementation, which takes the code that we have written following the standard, and then it actually does the work of publishing the web service. So there are a lot of web service uh, implementations, and one of the standard implementation is called Metro. So Metro is what is called a reference implementation. So that is an implementation that strictly follows the standard. So as long as you have written code that follows the JAXWS standard, you can use Metro to publish your web service, right? So the Metro is actually the thing that does all the work. So Metro is a reference implementation that comes bundled with Glassfish, which is why the code that we write following the JAXWS standard can be deployed in Glassfish. So it's not really Glassfish doing the work, it's Metro that's bundled inside Glassfish which is actually doing the work. So Metro looks at this class, Metro sees that this is a web service and Metro publishes the web service. So it's actually uh, a different project, it's a reference implementation, but it's bundled with Glassfish so we don't really bother about it, we just deploy the application in Glassfish and then let it do its work. So interestingly enough, Metro also comes bundled with the JDK, which is why we are able to do this. We are able to do an endpoint at publish, and then it's Metro which does the actual publish. So if you notice here, the console says Metro monitoring root name successfully. And if you look at the visual as well, you see here in the in the comments, you see the name Metro come up. And this, this is the same thing with um, the visual that Glassfish generates as well. So even in that visual, you can see the comments should have something called Metro because it's basically the same thing that do, that's doing the work, okay? And uh, this is what makes you now, if I uh, send SOAP requests to this endpoint, we do get a SOAP response because it's actually Metro, which makes a call to this to the right method and gets the right return type and then converts it to XML and does all the hard work. So that should explain how we are able to publish a web service without having to use Classfish. So there are some limitations to this though. By default, the, at least the way I've done it, so this is actually a single thread model. So when I make a SOAP request to this now, for a web service that's using endpoint.publish, there's only one thread that can execute at a time. So if I have one request that goes in, and the web service is executing and another request goes in in the meantime, then the second request has to wait for the first request to complete. So it's actually single threaded. It's fine because the use case for this is basically a development environment. A developer, while developing the code, can use this.
right? So we don't really need multiple threads. There are ways to make it work, but I'm not gonna go into that in this tutorial. But if you use Glassfish to publish the web service, you get multiple threads. It's, you can pretty much uh, run a production environment on Glassfish, it should be fine. But if we are using this, if we're using endpoint or publish, it's not recommended for a production scenario. It's something that you would use just for development. So this is how you publish web services just by running this one line. And when you're done, just hit stop so that the program stops. And now this web service is not accessible anymore, right? So this is a very simple way. It's kind of a shortcut to publish web services fairly quickly and to test out different uh, different code when you're developing. You don't really need Glassfish for it.